one. All right, we are live, everybody. I apologize for those of you that hung in there for me trying to get the broadcast started. We had some technical difficulties, but we're starting now and we're pretty excited about our conversation. Today, I've got an extremely special guest, Daniel Cabral. Daniel Cabral is a good friend and he is one of the men, he's got more faith than just about any man that, I'm, that I know. He inspires me and he inspires many other people almost every day. And I'm just honored to be here. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Damon Stoddard. I am the founder of Change University. And our vision is to, is to change men who will change their families and change the world. I'm really excited about today, Daniel. Apologize for the technical difficulties, but we made it, buddy. We did. We did. We made it. That must mean that uh, must mean that there's something good going to happen today, huh? That's what I was figuring. Kept telling myself. Yeah, so. something good. Well, Daniel, you have a story. You have a story that is going to inspire tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people in our lifetime. I believe you have faith unlike any faith I've ever seen. You inspire men on a daily basis. And you challenge me to be a better man. So I just want to I want to thank you for being a guest today. Well, thank you. I mean, I'm honored just as just as much as the next guy. You know, it's Lord's done some special things in my life to get my attention. And yeah, uh, so. yeah. Well, you know what, Daniel? Let's let's get right to it. All right. And what I want to encourage you to do today is I want to encourage you to be genuine, mm -hmm. transparent and honest because the more genuine and transparent and honest you are with these men, the more that they're going to, they're going to see that you and I were in situations much like, much like they are. And it's going to challenge them to really make some decisions that they can only make in this season of their life. Correct. So Daniel, tell us about your family. You're married, married, uh, August 5th, 1989, a little over 30 years ago. 30 years. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And tell us a little bit more. Well, um, I mean, where do I, I can start at the beginning and, and go as quick as I can. Are you, you know, are Matt, you guys separated currently? Yes. Yes. We're currently separated. Um, she walked out, uh, in February, the first week of February of this year. Um, she found herself another man, and and uh, she decided he was going to be more happy with him than she was with me. And the kicker to it was we have custody of our two little grandbabies, and uh, ages three and six. And it, she just didn't want to be a grandmother no more. On top of not wanting to be my wife any longer, mm -hmm. and she left myself and the grand the two granddaughters with me. And mm. mul multiple attempts on my part to say, well, if you're leaving me, keep the girls. She made it clear she wanted nothing to do with the girls m other than be a grandmother. She no longer wanted to be a mother to our granddaughters. So she made some decisions that it impacted the family. And Daniel, one thing I know is it would be really easy for us to talk about all of the things that she's doing. Mm -hmm. and how hard that is and one thing i admire about you is you don't do that because it's we not a, had... it's not about me it's it's about the entire family it's about the future generations it's about how my granddaughters are going to grow up and how they're going to meet men and what kind of men they're going to they're going to um choose to be with and i need to set that example yeah yeah so so let's um so let's just go a little deeper here so you've got a couple of granddaughters how old are your granddaughters Ages three and six. Three and six. And you have sole custody of those granddaughters currently. Oh, I have joint custody with my wife, but I have right now, phys, you know, sole physical custody because um, she doesn't want want to raise them. So. And you guys are living in a mansion. Uh, yeah, we're li living in an eight foot wide by 29 foot long uh, travel trailer. Wow. And where is that located? In uh, in Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee. And just for the benefit of the viewers, why did you move to Tennessee from where you were? You lived in 
Green, yeah. I lived in Greenville, South Carolina, in between Charlotte and Atlanta. Um, the reason I moved was there's a handful of reasons. Um, a good friend of mine lives lives here, and when all this happened, he, you know, he asked me to come and live there with him, and uh, I didn't know at first, but through prayer and the fact that you know, being close to my wife was causing me difficulties. It was causing the children difficulties of uncertainty and not trying to figure out what was going on. And I just felt God leading me to get away, start fresh. And um, she also told me to, she told me to move to Tennessee. She told me, you know, to go. And then my daughter who is in prison, the mother of my grandchildren who's in prison, she told me to go and to move to Tennessee as well because when she got out of prison, she doesn't want to go back to the area, which uh, all her old friends and bad habits are. She wants to start over fresh. So between the Holy Spirit and my wife and my grandchildren, my friend, every it just kept pushing me. And so I just said, okay, I'm going. And I packed everything up in a truck and grabbed my camper and moved to Tennessee. Been here for since July 1st. So let me let me recapture that just to pull out the, the key points for everybody to understand. So so Daniel, you're married. In February, your wife decides that maybe she wants to do something different. And all of a sudden you're watching the grandbabies. You've got a daughter that's in prison. And somewhere along the time, your daughter that's in prison says, you know what? I don't want to come back home because I'm afraid that when I get back home, I'm going to get stuck in the same crowd and fall back into the same place that I was. I want a new a new start. Correct. And so what you said, because you love your daughter so much, you said, you know what? I'm going to support my daughter, and I'm going to move to a place where she has the maximum likelihood of success. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to sacrifice, and I'm going to move into a little trailer with these two beautiful grandbabies so that they have the highest likelihood of success as well. Am I? Am, did I capture that well? Correct. And so now you are raising two beautiful little grandbabies by yourself Mm -hmm. in a new area. Wow. So, so for those of you that are listening right now, I just want to say something. Um, Daniel is a man who makes decisions based on principle. Daniel is a man who makes decisions based on what the Holy spirit says and what is right for the long term. Daniel, wouldn't it have been a lot easier to just say, nah, that's too far. I'm just going to stay here in South Carolina. It would have been a lot easier to do a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, not just to move, everything. I mean, I, I could have said, no, this is too hard. I could have, I could have, said, um, you know, it's not, a, again, it's just not about me. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, not about, about me. So, so let's um go back in time just a little bit. So you were separated a couple months from your wife and all of a sudden you're on Facebook and something pops up and you said, I, I think I should join this. What, what happened there? I believe, I believe that uh, I was in a couple of the homesteading uh, Facebook groups on homesteading and off-grid living. And um, I was sharing, I was sharing my thoughts about possibly moving to Tennessee before we even spoke, just, just, thinking about it and uh, kind of shared the story with somebody what had happened and why I was thinking about going to Tennessee and someone I think that's how someone referred me to your group and um, next thing I know um, I'm checking out your page and, and watching the video and I'm making a phone call to Damon Stoddard scheduling a, scheduling a phone call with Damon Stoddard to, to uh, figure out see if this is something that could help me because I have this daunting task in front of me um, and I have no earthly idea on how I'm going to do it, to be honest. And I was at the yeah. end of my rope. I had nowhere else to turn, but to the Lord. And, um, he led me straight to you. Wow. You know, I'm so honored to, to hear that. I, I remember very distinctly, I was doing a Facebook live interview with, uh, one of my friends and a, and a, and a young man that I mentor. And the title of the interview was um, Breaking the Generational Curses in Your Family. And I remember right after that 
phone call right after that interview you commented on the on the post and you said how do i how do i reach you i want i am ready to break the generational curses mm -hmm. how long did that decision take you to to make about 10 seconds you think yeah if not less because everything that happened prior to everything that happened prior to that point um brought me to your page and then brought me to watch that video and comment on it and you know i believe that the decision was already made before i even made the comment you know i think the decision was made it was just i need you know it was it was just accepting the fact that god led me there and i just needed to do it and um when i when we spoke on the phone and you went over the program with me yeah it was you know it just it didn't matter it didn't matter what was in the way it didn't matter what obstacle was in the way money didn't matter time where i was going to live didn't matter what obstacle it was i needed to help i needed to change and it didn't matter to me i was going to figure it out was going to get it done one way or the other so you made, so you made a 10 second decision to make a phone call and yeah. we get on the phone the next day and we're talking and i i remember talking with you very distinctly on that phone call. I remember exactly where I was sitting. I remember what you were saying. I remember you telling me the story of your grandchildren and the story of your wife. And I don't know how much of the, you know, the problems in your marriage you want to share, but you said, I have got to break the generational curses and I will do everything in my power to do it. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what I didn't know then that I know now about Daniel is when Daniel sets his mind to do something, he does it. You all out 110% said, I am going to do whatever I need to do to change the generational curses. And so you decided to sign up for my program, right? Yep. You decided to sign up for my program called Change University. And tell me about how your life started to change as you started watching the videos and interacting with me and doing some of the things that I challenged you to do, what, what started to change? I mean, and, and let me set, set the context here. You were, how much peace did you have in your life before you made that phone call? Zero. <laughs> I mean, Zero. Yeah. See, I was, it was, a, it was second by second turmoil and worry and, and, and fear. Mm. I mean, it was, it was, you know, all combined into, you know, into every second of every day you had worry, fear. Uh, I mean, just, you know, it was just, it was brutal. It was not, it was, I lost 30 pounds in less than 30 days right after wow. she left me. Um, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. The doctors wanted to put me on uh, all kinds of medicines and antidepressants and, um, <sighs> I mean, my job was suffering. I mean, my life was just, it was spiraling out of control. I mean, it, it was, I mean, if I didn't get, if I didn't get it together um, very quickly, I mean, I could have lost the girls. I mean, it was, I was that bad. I mean. Wow. Wow. So constant, constant stress. Kind of yes. like a lot of the guys that we see in the group, huh? Absolutely. Constant stress. And let's just fast forward to today, to, to today, Daniel. How much of that fear and constant stress do you experience today? I don't have any fear whatsoever. Zero fear. <laughs> um, I'm not even an ounce of fear. I won't. I mean, I won't lie. There is some stress, but everybody has stress. But the difference between today and bunch and many months ago is that I handle the stress in a manner now that quickly alleviates it. Mm. Um, I'm able to, I'm able to stop and process what's going on, look at the circumstances, see the bigger picture and make decisions that, that, um, that basically alleviate the stress. It, you know, I, it, the stress, the stress is just a, a, a momentary, thing that Satan tries to do to get to get you to unfocus on the go the goals that you set yeah. and 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 I just I've learned to just say I'm not falling for it I'm not falling for the distraction to get me away from the goals I've set in my life
And um, so this, you know, the difference from today and in, in, let's say, six, seven months ago, you know, no more fear. Yeah, there's some stress, but the stress doesn't even bother me. It, it starts to at first, but then I quickly deal with it. It's just like, you know, and you just, you know, just quickly settle it it's over, you know. That's awesome, Daniel. Yeah, that's awesome because you literally went from it was constant every minute of every day to I don't have it. That's why I was chuckling. I hope you don't mind that I was chuckling no, at your response. No, that's no, that's fine because I have to laugh at myself sometimes when you look back. I look back and go, wow, I was a, I was a mess. I was a you, mess. You were a mess, my friend. You were a, yeah. a mess, but you made a decision. You made a decision. Yeah. So, hey, show, show us your finger. Well, you, you, uh, you're so you have a wedding ring on. Yes. But you've been separated since February. February. Um, why are you wearing your wedding ring when she's off doing her own thing, things that aren't honorable to God or honorable to yourself? What is going on that you, I'm, I'm married, ain't I? But uh, Daniel, but, but they don't know what she's doing. I mean, it doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter what my wife's doing. It has no, (laughs) it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, for those of you, I mean, I'm I'm going to be open and honest. I I don't have a problem with not sharing. Um, my wife and I were in this uh, swingers lifestyle for 15 years. So my wife's continuing with that lifestyle. My wife's continuing mm-hmm. with multiple partners. Mom, but she does have a boyfriend that she's in love with, but she's still continuing with other people other than him. You know, that would bother most men. And it it doesn't bother me anymore because I I've come to understand to truly God's forgiveness isn't conditional, it's yeah. unconditional. And I wow. made a vow, I made a vow for better or for worse, till death do I part. It didn't wow. say anywhere in there, except if my wife commits adultery, except. If wife doesn't marry me no more. It says till death do us part. And until the Lord does something that stops it, because I even wow. feel this, I'll take it one step further. Even if my wife files for divorce and gets the divorce, the only way that our, my marriage is over is if she remarries. Wow. Okay. So I have all the way up until the day my wife remarries to keep my to keep believing that God can change her heart like he changed mine just because I've joined your program doesn't make me any better than any other man it just makes me obedient to God wow and I wasn't I wasn't obedient to God prior I was in the lifestyle with my wife I was chasing my flesh just like my wife was I decided that I wouldn't want to do it no more and my wife decided she wanted to keep doing it there's some other in there, but that's basically the basics of what happened, you know, and um, the stress of the children on her. But the fact the fact remains, I'm not giving up on my wife. My ring is on my finger because I'm still married to her. My vows are to God, and until God says take that ring off, that ring's staying on. And until you know. It ain't come, it's, the ring's not coming off. It's just that's the way it is. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to tell you. Now you get to see Daniel, right? I told you you'd love this guy. That level of passion and conviction is unlike any I have ever seen. So, Daniel, let's just say that your wife walked up after this phone call and says, Daniel, I'm ready to get back together. What would you say? Well, <laughs> I would say I'd love to get back together, but there's going to have to be some changes. There's going to uh-huh. have to be some counseling. There's go- there's a lot of things that's going to have to happen because if she's not right with God, then she's just going to leave again and cause more pain and suffering for the children. So to protect the children, there there would be there would have to be some things put into place that would that would, she's going to have to show that she's that she's you know changing. For the most part, honestly, too, for my wife to come back and say, I was wrong, please forgive me, I want to come home, that's an answer to prayer. And that would be me, the first step in her saying, you know, if she's serious, and she, 
you know, God's got a hold of our heart and, you know, it's, we're on step one to making the rest of our lives together the way God intended it. So, yeah, Dan, Daniel, I, I appreciate that. I want to share with the guys just kind of where that question came from. I remember, I remember a phone call. I, once again, I remember exactly where we were on this phone call and you were kind of wrestling with, you had some fear that your wife was going to come back and things were going to go back to the way they were. And she would leave you again. Cause what you didn't mention is she left you once 25 years ago, 25 years ago for three months. Yes. And so that fear started creeping into you. Right. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we had a conversation and I said, Daniel, it, it sounds to me like what you really want is for your wife to be reconciled to God. Yes. More than, it's not me. It's God. Cause if she's reconciled to God, our, our marriage will flourish. If she's not reconciled to God, it'll, it'll fail. Boy, that is, that is a courageous statement. You want your wife to be reconciled to God. That's, that's unconditional, unequivocal love right there. I don't want her to come back unless she's reconciled to God, because I would, it would, it would just create more opportunity for me to fail. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Daniel. Wow. So, um, so you get into this thing called change university, right? What, just for the benefit of the guys, like what does a typical week, two weeks look like in change university and talk about some of the things that happen in change university that really impacted you personally change generations. For me, the biggest, the biggest thing that helped me was creating new daily habits. Mm. I can't, creating those new habits and recording them so that I can look back and see what I'm doing and how I'm doing it to see how it's affecting me. Cause Damon's program tracks, it tracks everything. <laughs> Damon's program tracks your heart rate. <laughs> Sorry, <Dan. laughs> okay. It tracks how many hours you sleep. It tracks your weight loss. It tracks <laughs> everything about your life from the moment you get up from the moment you go to bed and how long you sleep <laughs> it it shows you when you it, it, it's easy and i don't understand it as much as damon does but his program is designed to track everything in your life so that he can break it down through it in, in, in a spreadsheet, if you will. He can break it down and show you mood swings, show you how your weight's affecting your at, your, 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 your attitude, your, per, you know, your, your moods, how everything, if, if you got a phone call, because we track, if you had contact with your wife, how it affected you and everything's affected. So being able to be told by Damon, hey, I can tell that you had this happen in your life because of what you were doing. And then it makes it, what that did, guys, is it showed me things that I didn't even know what were happening in the background and how everything in my life affects my decision making without even knowing it, without even knowing it was happening. Damon's program broke that down and allowed me to see how now I can, on my own, after going through this program, be able to start to see things happening in my life and know where it's coming from and how to address it to reverse it, fix it, change it, because I've been given the tools day by day by day by day on how to do those things. So between the the, the habits of creating all new habits and in creating, um, tracking everything you're doing um, and how it's affecting you, it's you, you can't get that in a regular counseling class. I'm sorry, you, you know, this is, <laughs> this is not counseling. I tell yeah, people that, I tell people, yeah. I tell people that, um, uh, what's the, oh, I keep the, the phrase just went out of my head. Um, it'll come to me in a few minutes. I'll bring it up, but, um, it's, it's a men's group, but it's a men's group that builds men in a godly environment through step-by-step -step instruction and, 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 and accountability. And because most men say they can do it on their own and, 
I can tell you that one in a million can do it on their own. Yeah. All yeah. of us need somebody. So Dan, Daniel, I, <laughs> I apologize for laughing. <laughs> I had no idea what you were going to say, but, uh, you know, I, I give you the tools to track this stuff. And then I, and then I teach you how to, how to look at what's going on and say, huh, wow. So if I change this habit, it has this impact on my life. Right. And, and not just one area in multiple areas. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, um, what, what do you find? You, you mentioned a men's group. What is the Im- impact of the community of other men in Change University on your life? Because just for the benefit of people on the call, we we do not do this alone. This isn't Change University is not a Damon with you every step of the way. This is Damon with you with a group of men that are in exactly the same position. Many have gone a little bit farther. We are connecting with each other multiple times a day encouraging each other we are every tuesday i teach you a new lesson that every thursday we're in small group i mean we're connected kind of 24 7. i call it you kind of you kind of have a bat phone once you join change change university mm-hmm. right the ability to call commissioner gordon <laughs> if you will yeah but that's the other guys what is the impact of that oh it's it's you can't even put a, a price <laughs> on it you can't put a price on it I mean, for instance, one of our men the other night went to a praise of some type of praise concert and he was able to with, within our Facebook private group between us men, he was able to go live and share his experience with us. I mm. mean, just, you know, just I mean, the, the, the it's not just one on one. It's a group of men that can share at any time of the day or night a problem or not just a problem, something awesome. I mean, something, you know, uh, uh, something that happens that just that lifts you. You can immediately share that with immediately or live share that with the other men, and you don't know someone in the other group. One of the other men in the other group might be having a hard time, and all of a sudden, someone pops up and says, you know, tells some, hey, this 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 just happened to me and with my kids or with my with my uh, wife, and it and that's the source of encouragement that the other the other guy needs to have that at your fingertips twenty four seven. You can't you can't put a price on that. You you can't you can't find that's hard to find anywhere else. It's men that know exactly what you're going through, men that know what you're feeling, how you're feeling, and you're able to encourage each other because it isn't all it isn't all roses in in, in every single moment of every day. There are day times of the day that someone one of us gets depressed, but we have someone to fall back on, and having that group. You don't st- you don't stay depressed very long. If something bad happens, you're able to talk about it and be right back, get right back on that horse and, and get in the saddle and keep riding and keep going. And um, you don't no man no man left behind and no man stays down for very long. He gets lifted up by a partner. Someone's lifting him up. Yeah. Wow, Daniel, that's that's awesome. It is um it's pretty awesome to watch you guys. So so what have you observed with the other men in the group? that are going, that come in, like after, after you came, came in and you saw some new guys join, what, what have you observed? Well, I mean, it's like looking in a mirror, you see, you know, looking in a mirror, um, like go back six months, you know, one of the, one of the men that joined watching him in the past four or five weeks, watch him go from, ready to throw in the towel on everything in his life. I mean, just he was at the end of his rope. I mean, it, that's that was me seven months ago, eight mm-hmm. months ago. Mm-hmm. You know, and, this, and there's a gentleman six weeks ago, and, and where he's at today, I mean, it, the, the, the change is he, he's not the same man he was even six weeks ago. And to see that, to see the effects on those men and how they're coming along, um, it reminds me of where I went, where I came from. It also gives me hope to continue to change, to continue to move forward, um, and to continue to set a godly example for my grandkids and my grandkids, grandkids. I mean, without, you know, seeing these men and knowing that their children and their children's children are going to be affected by this, it's, yeah. it brings joy to know that this, this change university is, cha- is changing lives. 
Um, it, there's no doubt about it. Um, you can go to other groups. Um, there are other groups that there's actually there's men in our group that go to other groups. I mean, Change yeah. University is Change University is what it is. It's a university. It is a school. It is a teaching apparatus to teach men godly ways and how to and all the other stuff we've spoken about previously. There's men that go to divorce care. There's men that go to all these other programs that are in our group. They don't just come to Change University. They're they're changing their entire lifestyle. They're changing everything about their lives to make sure that they have closed that door behind them, that, the, that there will be no longer any more failings mm -hmm. in their families going forward. They're doing everything in their power. And where, you know, there's, I don't know how to explain it other than Change University is like a, it's a school. It's a school. It yeah. teaches you yeah. and gives you all the tools you need. It's not a counseling program. It's, it's, it's school. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a it's it's school, it's a Bible college with a with <laughs> it, it's, you're getting Bible and you're getting Bible, but but on top of the Bible, you're getting practical, hands-on how to um how to anything, how to do I mean if I'm, it, it, I can't even <laughs> I, love it. I love you, Daniel. You know what it, your past is is guys, isn't he just awesome? I mean, you're just so awesome, Daniel. And I would talk, talk forever here, but you know what, Daniel? Here's a question for you. Um, we're not going to talk about the cost of change university today, but it's obviously not free, right? And what would you say to the guys that say, "I just can't afford this; it's too expensive"? Well, first thing I would say is you can't afford not to. Mm. That's the first thing I'd say. Um, but, but then when fat, when rubber, when the rubber hits the road, people look at the, the cost when they talk to you and there's like, there's no absolute way I can do this. Well, first of all, those guys that you're, you're going to, that are listening live and the ones that listen to this afterwards that watch this, Damon will work with you however he can to make, it's not about the money. It's about changing lives. Damon went through this personally himself and he f surrounded himself with other godly men, men that have helped other families for years. This, you read Damon's book, you'll see the men that have worked with him. There wasn't a, you know, there was some programs that he got, in, he got eventually got in with, but that, this program came about because of the need and yes, there's a cost, but Damon will work with you on that cost. He will work with you on to get through it. You can't afford not to do this program. If you're serious and you want to change generations to come for your children and their children, your grandchildren, all, all the way down the line, if you truly want to change, then don't worry about the cost. Damon will work with you. Things will happen. God will provide. Read, read, the, read the Bible over and over again in so many areas that where people were that were obedient and people that followed after God and said, I don't care what happens, I'm following God. God blessed them more than they ever could imagine. Yeah. I left, I left Greenville, South Carolina, making close to 50 grand a year. Came to Tennessee making $10 an hour, 15 hours a week. I am now starting my own business and I am making daily right now a little over $20 an hour average starting my own business and I've got more work than I can handle. Because of your obedience. Because, because, your obedience I, chose, because I chose to trust God. How, how do I make those payments? How do I make payments from, to live? How do I do these things? I didn't know how. I didn't know I was going to do it. But mm -hmm. I chose... I chose to change my life to give glory and honor to God and God's blessing me for it. So those of you that are, 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 are afraid or scared that you can't afford it, God can afford anything because he <laughs> owns it all. There you go. Wow, Daniel. It's not your so, money. It's God's money. He'll provide it. So, Daniel, what – what? Um, thank you for that, by the way. What – 
what is the impact of your decision and change university on your grandchildren and your daughter? Well, I'll start with my grandchildren. My, you know, when we get in the car and we start on our way to school in the morning and your grandchildren say, Make sure, let's pray for let's pray for Gamma because my, my, they call my grand my, their their grandmother Gamma. Let's pray for Gamma. Let's pray. When when a three year old asks you to pray, you wow. know you're setting an example because they see that they see their grandfather praying. They see the man that's leading their life praying and asking God to provide everything and, and thanking Him for what He provides. Wow. And when the three-year-old does that, it brings tears to your eyes. It, it, it gives you drive to do more. Yeah. It gives you drive to pray more, to read more. When your daughter from prison writes you letters and calls you and tells you that she's thankful for everything that I'm doing and she's praising God for it. Mm -hmm. And the letters that my daughter has written me. Hold on. All right, man. You know, again, we talked, go back a few seconds ago, we talked about being obedient and God blessing financially to pay for this program. You know, that's a sliver of what God does. Mm. My obedience, my six-year-old granddaughter, said that she's been she's asked god to forgive her for her sins wow my daughter has forgiven me for the things that i've done in the past and has asked my forgiveness and asked and she, mm -hmm. and asked me to forgive her for all the things that she's done that's god answering prayers that's god providing for the future that's god making sure that I will succeed and my grandchildren and my daughter will succeed. Wow, Daniel. There's not a there's no way that I'm going to fail. There's no way that I'm going to quit. God led me to this program. Change University has lived up to its name and it has changed me forever. It has given me the tools, it has given me the knowledge to, that I need to, to, to do this for the rest of my life, to, ser to serve God and to, to serve others. And, you know, wow. God changes and he blesses. It's not about getting your wife back. It's not about putting your family back together. It's about changing who you are as a human being and as a child of God and letting God take care of all those other things. You know, that was, if you that was try to put man. your family, if you try to put your family back together, you will fail. If you try to put yourself back together, you will fail. Just ask God to put you back together and you will succeed. Wow. Wow, Daniel. I don't know. I don't know how to top that, my friend. You, um, you have inspired a lot of people today. You have changed yourself from the inside out. You've asked God for the help from the inside out. You have changed your grandchildren, changed your daughter. We're only six months into this decision, mm -hmm. right? So if you had it to do all over again and you could go back and take away the pain and take away, take away the separation, would you do it? Yeah, there's only one thing I do differently. Yeah, I'd join earlier. <laughs> so you're so you're thankful for the pain, aren't you? You know that phrase you have, "pain drives change," rings a million percent clear in my head every single day. That phrase is in my mind every day. It yeah. it doesn't go, it, if not multiple times a day. Um, pain is good because it filters out all the bad. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a choice when you're in pain. 
to live in that pain, to hide from that pain, or to change that pain. Yeah. And some people live in it. Some people run from it. I chose to change it. That's so awesome, Daniel. Wow. So one, one piece of advice that you would have for anybody and everybody listening to this, what would it be? Any advice? What would it be? Trust God. Mm. To trust God to fix it. Don't try to fix it. Just trust God to fix it. But, but the the but to it you have to go to god you have to be you have to go to you have to go to god and let him change you and, and i say when i say trust god it, it's it's more than just one aspect it's trusting god in everything mm -hmm. you know and what and what i what i've seen in that process and every man goes through this is they go from this place of blaming their wives and blaming the situation and just wanting to be out of the pain to breaking and surrendering before God and saying, God, I don't know why you have me here, but I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to change me from the inside out. And they surrender. And it's when, when that surrender happens, it's an, it's a sign that they trust God. And that sign of trusting God immediately their lives started to change. And the, the way that we know their lives start to change and yours, I've watched this and the other men in the group is all of a sudden they're flooded with peace. The Bible talks about the peace of God that transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds forevermore. That peace comes when we finally surrender. And I think for you, Daniel, that commitment to change university, that commitment to be a part of this was when you decided to surrender it. And I'm just so honored that God allowed me to be a part of your journey. I, this isn't by, and by the way, guys, I want you guys to know this is not about Damon. This is not about Damon. This is about Damon went through this himself and I've experienced the pain and I made some decisions and God put some men in my life. And now I feel like I want to give that back and, and to, to sit here and watch you, Daniel, and to hear you incredibly inspired, incredibly inspired. So I just want to, I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for your passion. I want to thank you for your commitment and your faith. And I just want to say that I cannot wait to watch God work through you and how you're going to transform so many lives, including your family because of it, Daniel. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for all that you've done as well. I do want to add one thing that yep. you made a, you made a comment just a moment ago about sometimes we, some sometimes a lot of people say, well, God, I don't know why you have me here. You know, for me, for me, Damon, I know why God has me, put me in this position. I was mm -hmm. living a life of sin. I was wow. living a life of self-pleasure. I was living a life of me, me, and me. Mm -hmm. And I was claiming to be a Christian. I used to go to church years ago, went to church, went to church. <coughs> I was a youth leader. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was very busy in the church, very active in the church, and I walked away. I know, I know why. I know why I'm. I know why my wife left me. I know why I'm at. I'm where I'm at. And I, I talked to some men, and they're like, "Well, I'm going to church. I'm doing this. I'm doing that." You know, I know a lot of people that go to church and do this and do that, but they're still not right with God. Mm -hmm. So remember. You're in a situation. If you're in a situation, God's trying to teach you something. He's trying oh, to get boy. your attention for something. So don't think because you're going to church. Don't think because you are a deacon or an elder or a Sunday school teacher or a Juana's teacher or whatever it is, bus driver for the church, doing the bus ministry, whatever it might be. God's still trying to teach you something. So be willing to let it all go and let God teach you what he's teaching you. Accept the pain, be joyful in it, because the blessings are far more greater than the pain. Let God teach you. Don't don't be putting all the blame on your wife. A lot of guys say, oh, my wife this, oh, my wife that. Well, guess what? It takes two. It takes two to mess things wow. up. 
you know, if we're, if we were truly, truly living as men, as men, if we were truly ministering to our wives as our partners, as our helpmate, as what God designed our marriages to be, okay, yeah, we have human issues and there's going to be arguments and disagreements, but if you're truly ministering to your wife as God intended, your marriage cannot fail. <laughs> Oh, amen. <laughs> wow, Daniel. So if, you, if right, your marriage friend. is if your marriage is failing, you're not ministering to your wife the way God intended. Seek that. Seek it out. Have God show you where you failed. Wow. Wow, Daniel. You know what? We could talk for hours. We're probably going to talk a couple more times on here. What do you want to? What do you want to bet? I bet you uh, will. I'm sure we will. <laughs> I'm sure we will. <laughs> yeah. So. So with that, I just want to share with people that um, I want to help. And on the screen here, there's a link that you can click. Just changeuniversity.org slash meet. You can go in there. You can schedule a free 45-minute phone call with me, just like Daniel scheduled the 45-minute phone call. Um, it's going to take you about 10 minutes to make that decision. It takes about that long to sign up. And I promise you that on that phone call, uh, you're going to find some hope that you haven't found and you're going to find some a path to getting out of that, out of this situation. I want to help you. I want to serve you. Daniel wants to help you and serve you. And uh, with that, Daniel, I love you, brother. I'm proud of you. Love you too. I'm so proud of you, buddy. And I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. Take care. Take care.